I'm, my name is Ronan McLaughlin. <laughs> come from Ireland. Mm -hmm. I grew up there, out in the Irish countryside. Yeah, I kind of found myself here, yeah, through poi spinning, really. That was one of the very big things that changed the path that I went on. I never wanted to be a performer, never wanted to be in front of cameras, to be standing up in front of big groups of people and talking or teaching. I was, yeah, that was kind of the last place that I would ever imagine myself. But I got into poi spinning after I saw someone spinning fire at a beach party. I was 18, I think I had my first set of fire poi for my 19th birthday. That was the gateway into my body and in many ways into my mind as well. It opened me to all sorts of different realms from yoga to tai chi, meditation, all of that world, dancing and stuff like I never danced, I was always way too shy to dance. When I got the poise, suddenly I was able to dance, I had something I could move with, you know. But I couldn't dance without them, it took me years, it wasn't until my mid-twenties that I was like, okay, I feel naked when I try to dance without poi, but I'm missing out on something in life. If I'm not dancing, I'm missing a big part of the human experience. It was a big struggle, you know, but it was something that I knew that from the lessons of poi spinning and juggling, and I was showed the process of learning. So I started dancing with my hands and then into the rest of my body. One, definitely one of the best things I ever did. Poi has shown me the process, you know, of how something goes from impossible to possible. And realizing that if you invest attention in a certain direction, your system starts to adapt to it. Just to have that experience of that over and over again is what one of the things a poi or juggling or any of these things give you. It's this constant thing of failure to success and you're getting it fast, you know, you get quite a fast feedback of that. Something's impossible, oh now it's possible. Something's really difficult, oh it's easier, it's easier, it's easier. Oh, it's, it's effortless. You know, and you get to see that over and over again. I think it's really accessible to all, like anyone, no matter how much experience you have beforehand, anyone can pick it up and with a little bit of patience, they can start to see results very, very fast, especially with a, with a nice little bit of guidance and support. Exactly, like how well you're able to sail and navigate the the storms of life and the, the currents of life depends on, on how you are in the situation. So like, how do you take care of yourself? And I think this is one of the things that started to become really big for me with, in relation to poison because I got into all of this stuff, all of this collecting, all these learning techniques, all these tools, all these perspectives, all of this stuff, you know, and I like, wow, like at times I was able to use them. I was like, wow, I can learn stuff really fast. But I started to realize that all the tools and techniques in the world are completely useless unless you actually use them and unless you actually have the energy and the clarity to use them because you can have all of this stuff but if you're just overwhelmed by life which we are a lot of the time it's very difficult to use them so it's, it becomes very inconsistent suddenly i started to realize well sustainable spinnings and sustainable life in whichever direction you want to go you know like you have got to take care of your whole system if your physical system is malfunctioning, you're not going to be able to play anymore. You're not going to be able to practice anymore. It's funny, it's like when I started poi spinning, at a certain point I was like, oh, I have to start stretching or I'm going to injure myself. Okay, arms, you know, I'm using my arms. It's like, okay, I just have to stretch my arms. That was that was it. And it's like, oh, and then I certain point I was like, oh, actually, it's connected to everything else. And uh, actually, I've got, to, I've got to look after the whole body. I've taught workshops all over the world. It was one of the things about this that started to get into spinning these things, got really into it, and then started to find myself getting invited. Oh, do you want to come here and uh, perform here? Do you want to come here and teach there? Sure, that sounds great. So I just, just kind of went with that for around 10 years. But I arrived at a funny point where I found myself going to these places, all these people knew who you were, you know, and it was different expectations and stuff, and then there was just different pressures to be something, and different, all these ideas about oneself that started to actually get in the way of my practice and of my play. And I found myself at a certain point with this feeling that I was training for someone else. I was practicing so I could show a new move, so I could uh, discover a new innovation to, to show to people, so that I would still be 
were worthy, that I would still be worth something and I could still maintain the life that I liked. I started to feel like I had kind of fallen into a technical rat race. At a certain point, I, I stepped back. I was like, okay, I don't want to do this like this anymore. I'd say for about the past three or four years, my practice has changed a lot. Where before it was really about trying to drill stuff, it was really about trying to push something somewhere. I started to try to go back a bit, to kind of going back to that. Because there was an original passion there that why I got where I was in the first place was because I enjoyed it so much and because I, I got into it. And it was as much for myself as anyone else, you know, and it was really about my, my enjoyment of it. And I've been enjoying it much more as well, like just trying to take that pressure off of it, that it has to be something. The time I learned how to separate a weave, you know, you're doing a weave and you separate it, was like, whoa, two circles, whoa, that feels so cool. And you're so into it and it's like, and you're feeling it. And when you're feeling it, I think other people feel it. But then at a certain point, that gets kind of disregarded. Okay, that's not worth ending anymore. Now it's about this fancier move, you know, and now that's the cool thing. But it's, what happened to that, that feeling that really like, when you're really in something. And I think that that's, there's something in that, you know, in that when you're feeling it, other people are feeling it. I think one of the things for the last while that's been very important for me is to go back to my journey, and to my process. Not to get so lost in what other people are doing and what's going on outside of yourself. You know, and sure, take inspiration from there. But when you start to compare yourself and you start to get into competition, often you lose yourself in it. So I feel like there's a few different practices there, you know, there's putting your attention in a certain direction, and then there's the noticing that your attention's gone and then there's the very efficiently, very gently bring yourself back. And just those three things, training those three things, are very, very useful skills. And it's not about how long you can keep your mind, it's not like some sort of Olympic thing. Yeah, you can't really measure that, you know, so it's like, but just the practice of it, it's like strengthening those muscles, go in a direction, you know, it's, you don't have to get anywhere. We're playing with infinity, you know, like it's the same thing with poise spinning or anything, like we're playing with infinity. Don't worry too much about what's going on over there or having to keep up with this move or that move or this thing just what's what's your direction you know and yeah no one can spin like you can spin no one can be like you can be you have something in yourself that's that's your thing and i feel like the truer we are the, the smoother it goes